Hi guys, how you doing? I uh, want to do sort of a follow-up video to a video that I did previously and it's not about the Zcam E2 uh, F6 even though I am going to be actually doing uh, more videos about that camera. No, it's actually about the ATEM Mini uh, live video switcher and streaming device from Blackmagic which I already did a video like I said uh, kind of showing you all the cool features that this has to offer and how you use it and kind of how I use it in my studio setup but uh, this follow-up video is about two things. One is a, a little mistake or a new feature that I discovered. And the other thing is about some little like updates that I added to my whole setup to make it even better than it already was. So if you haven't watched my original video, maybe maybe you can watch that one right after you finish this one so you can uh, see all the other cool features because I'm not going to be going through all of that in, in this video. So anyways, first thing I wanted to show you guys is... Uh, this cool little uh, accessory I got. There's actually one of these lenses that I got. Uh, this is a, a Canon lens. Uh, this is a 70 to 200, but it's a servo lens. It's a compact servo lens from Canon. And what's cool is that it's meant for kind of cinema applications, but it's kind of like what you would find, you know, in like a television studio. Uh, it's servo, meaning you can operate the, the zoom of it, and it actually has a nice zoom, like I said, 70 to 200. Uh, it's a pretty fast lens and it covers a sensor of uh, basically the size of a sensor of uh, sort of like an APS-C and super 35 millimeter image size sensor. Uh, so you can definitely use it for, you know, with a lot of these cinema cameras. Uh, and it's an EF mount. A uh, really cool thing because now in my setup right now uh, for this camera, I'm actually using the uh, Blackmagic Packet 6K camera. And because that camera has the EF mount on it, I have another one of these lenses, but it's actually the uh, the lens, uh, the, the the other version that they have, which is the 18 to 80 millimeters, as a little bit wider. Um, and the cool thing about this, and the reason why I'm using it now uh, in my setup here, my live streaming setup or live to tape, is because I can now using the ATEM Mini, or rather even like the software that comes with the ATEM Mini, I can use it now to control not just the focusing in that camera and colors and all those cool things I showed you guys, but I can actually even zoom in and out because it's a, like I said, it's a lens that has a, you know, motorized zoom lens in, in it. Um, so here, for example, if you guys look at my ATEM software control, uh, you can kind of see this is how it looks, right? But then if I go to my camera page, uh, here's my camera one, which is the, the uh, you know, a Blackmagic uh, Pocket 6K camera. And in here, it tells me it's on air. Uh, so I can now actually go, uh, if you look at it, for example, let's say I wanted to get a nice close-up here of this uh, uh, here camera. Uh, I can go here to my zoom and I can just scroll it up. And you can see I can zoom in. And it's, you know, you, you can you can obviously do it a lot more gentle. Uh, it just depends how, how fast you move it. You can do it very slow, you can go fast. This is, this is uh, showing everything here in my studio, which is a mess right now. Like it usually is because uh, I'm kind of busy usually always with like new gear testing and uh, a lot of this gear is either loaners or I borrow it or I rent it and then I have to send it back. So I have boxes and boxes. So uh, I'm not going to uh, show you guys here too much. I'm going to actually here zoom in on this camera. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, that's the cool thing about it. Like if I switch to my other camera here so you can see the lens itself and while I now adjust the zoom, You'll be able to see this is what happened. So I can remotely, you can zoom in and out, uh, and and yeah, it's a pretty cool, you know, ability like to be able to to actually do that uh, while you're sitting remotely. Uh, I think is uh, is definitely helpful because, uh, like I was saying before, uh, you know, let, let's say you're doing this like a one man operation, kind of like I am right now, uh, and and you want to be able to like I said, fully control the cameras I have connected, but also uh, control the lenses. Well, now, now not only can you control just the, the focus, but also the zoom. And the focus, obviously, like before, uh, for example, I could zoom in here again. Let's I'll zoom in on the camera, and if I want to, I can adjust the focus, obviously, to, uh, let's see here, to the back. So I can, uh, again, doing it all through here, through the software, the ATEM software control. Uh, and then if I want, I can switch the focus back to my camera in the foreground. I can also do this, uh, the AF thing, right? So it's, you know. Now, obviously, this is not something you're going to be using um, uh, to 
uh, you're probably not going to be doing the, like I said, the live focusing uh, like while you're live in the camera. But you can have it, for example, while you're previewing the camera. Uh, especially if you have somebody else operating this, it would be even better. Obviously, one person in front of the camera, and I'll see the other person operating this behind the scenes using the, the ATEM Mini and then the software. Uh, but you can also, like I said, then have the outputs on all these cameras so you can kind of see and adjust your zoom, basically, your framing, adjust your focus, and before you actually go and switch to that camera. Uh, and uh, another thing, obviously, that you can add, which you can't do with the ATEM Mini, uh, you know, despite all the other cool things you can already do, the one thing they weren't able to do add is pan and tilting of the camera simply because, you know, that's not something that's within a camera. But you can get a lot of these really cheap pan and tilt systems, uh, or if you have a gimbal already, you can, you know, these cameras are very, very light. So you can throw it on a gimbal and you can use uh, if a lot of them, they have remote, so you can use it through a phone. So you can actually have even remote pan, tilt, zoom, and focus. So you can literally have like a fully automated kind of a live. TV studio, let's say if you're doing live streaming, or in my case, I actually use this a lot of times when I do these kind of desktop reviews, because instead of me recording separate on all these cameras and doing the editing, for a lot of like these quick videos, I'll just kind of do like a live edit while I'm talking about something, and I just record it all to, you know, an external recorder in my case up here, uh, and, and if you get the Atom Mini Pro, you can actually record there. Um, so, you know, it's, again, it makes it a lot quicker and then you can just have a video that's finished, upload it to YouTube or whatever it is that you posted and be done and over with. You don't have to edit the stuff. So anyways, these lenses, they're not cheap, but they're they're really good lenses. So uh, the 70 to 200 and the 18 to 80 compact uh, servo lenses from Canon. So check them out. Uh, links as always in the description. Another thing I wanted to show you is a little mistake that I made, which was actually Basically, in my previous video, if you, you know, after this, you, should, you guys should probably watch that if you want to see all the cool features about the ATEM Mini. But in that video, I said that uh, there was a bug with the latest firmware, as in that the second I connected my uh, my packet uh, 6K camera, that it basically I was not able to actually go in the full frame, uh, you know, 6K basically like the sensor. Uh, it would actually crop into like this weird aspect, and the reason was because. Uh, the ATEM Mini would switch all the cameras, would basically co sync it to whatever the ATEM Mini was set to the standard, and the standard was 60p. And since the packet 6K in 60p, it cannot actually shoot in 6K, it has to shoot in a crap mode. That kind of made it almost useless, but that was actually a mistake on my part. So uh, somebody reached out to me, let me know, and I've checked it now, and in the software, it's actually a very simple thing. So you can change it to multiple standards. So I'll show you guys up here. When you're in the ATEM software control, you click this little gear icon. And then right here in the first one, general tab, you can set the video standard to whatever you want. So the automatic one is uh, the 60p, right? Um, the 1080-60. I switch now to 24 because that's usually what I prefer to do when I do kind of live to... Uh, to, to tape uh, basically kind of these edits or even when I do live streaming again because I use the pocket 6k camera so anyways that's kind of like the other feature and uh, otherwise again if you guys are interested in all the other cool things that you can do with the ATEM Mini uh, you know and, and uh, kind of like my own setup up here and how I'm using it and again check out that video uh, oh another thing because like in my video I kind of mentioned that I use sometimes my a road uh, roadcaster mixer for for sound and that's usually the case when i'm uh here let me zoom out uh, i have it up here actually and i kind of have it ready because usually when i'm doing these kind of you know live streaming videos that i kind of also put on my podcast which by the way you guys can again uh, follow my podcast uh, by following the links in the description but yeah when i do my podcast i kind of like to do it all together so this way the roadcaster is great for that because Again, you can have multiple microphones, you can have telephones, like somebody call in on the show, all that stuff. And it's a very good way of recording audio, and it just spits out a kind of a file that's ready for, for you to upload to your, your podcast. But when I'm not doing podcasting, or if I'm doing live-to-tape kind of a desktop reviews, like I'm usually doing up here, then in that case, I actually use uh, the uh, microphone that I have up here, a studio microphone, it's the Rode NTG5. Uh, that I reviewed, really good mic, but it's actually being connected to my Pocket 6K, when, which in this case is my A camera. And uh, and so the audio that you're actually hearing is coming in through there into basically here. So the ATEM Mini uh, actually here, as you can see, this little button uh, that, you know, turns red, uh, showing me that uh, 
that the audio from that camera is being actually used in my sort of my laugh live stream uh, or, or the live to tape kind of recording uh, so yeah you, you can actually do that you don't need to have a roadcaster for your audio and desktop kind of or, or kind of podcasting microphones you can have it how i'm doing it right now with a standard kind of a video mic uh or or the microphone on your camera which obviously i wouldn't recommend because it's too far but you, basically you can have like a professional video microphone that you can be using this and then you don't need anything else other than your cameras your microphone and obviously the atem mini pro anyways that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, let me know uh, in the comments below. And if you have any other questions about whether it's my setup or maybe suggestions for videos you want me to do, kind of follow-ups maybe about a video that I did before, and even about the Zcam E2F6, if you guys want me to do various tests. I know some people are requesting that I compare this actually side-by-side -side to the Blackmagic Packet 6K camera, so I will be doing that video. But maybe in that video, again, send me like sort of things that you'd want me to compare. I don't know, is it the rolling shatter or whatever it is. Let me know and I'll try to do as many of these kind of side-by-side -side tests. Uh, anyways, once again, my name is Tom Antos. And as always, uh, if you guys want to stay in touch with everything that I'm doing, then head on over to my website at TomAntosFilms.com where you can subscribe to my newsletter so you stay up to date. Uh, and that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.